So I wouldn't worry about that. The way I would think about it would be to let's go in the use case behind anyone who's trying to do Libra, right? So the use case behind this would be it's too expensive for Elizabeth to send money back home. It is too slow, it is too error prone, and Ripple is here to change that, working with existing financial institution, banks, PSP, and within the regulations of the country, and we are able to support them. So to my mind, the use case is much more important, and we enable that today for hundreds of financial institutions around the world. Ripple is actually up and running and at providing this technology. Do you think Libra will ever come to fruition, and could they work side by side? Uh, what I would say is eventually the customers will choose, right? So today we are here and now we are working with financial institutions. We have a great distribution network working with the partners and enabling Elizabeth to be able to send money back home. So let's roll with that. You've partnered with a lot of the traditional banking systems to help kind of improve this payments industry and help speed up a lot of that cross-border action. How big does that market, how big is that market for you partnering with those more traditional banks? Uh, so today, most of the cross-border business is dominated by banks or PSPs. So they own 100% of the market. And that's what we are after because what we are doing is we are changing the plumbing, which is the old plumbing and replacing it with the in post-internet era plumbing. And with that, the same financial institutions could be instant, they could be error-free, and they can make sure that they're able to provide the service to Elizabeth in a very transparent manner. So when you send your dirhams back to GBP in London, you should exactly know how much money will get delivered back home. And that's what we can do today uh, with our existing financial institutions. Also, we're able to use cryptocurrency XRP, which is a bridge asset, to provide liquidity on demand. So one of the reasons remittances are so expensive is because they use something called as a pre-funded Nostra account. Once that cost is taken away from the financial institution, that means they can fund on demand, they would be able to provide much better service and cheaper service to their customers like Elizabeth. When we talk about many of the big players in this payments industry, they're primarily coming out of the U.S. or China, many of them. Do you think there's room for companies here in the Middle East to get to that size and scale? Firstly, I think that's a huge opportunity, right? So if you look at uh, ecosystem in the U.S., U.S. has a large domestic market, it has got the VC funding, and companies can experiment with a regulatory framework that essentially exists today. Same opportunity exists in the Middle East. It's the largest remittance market in the world. If you take GCC as combined, you talked about Mbadla putting fund aside to give to companies who want to create new business ideas. And then we, all we need is aspiration, all we need is energy to be able to create new business models. And to my mind, I wouldn't be surprised if over the next five years there are two, three global brands that originate out of GCC in the uh, remittance space. So if you look at somebody like Finabler, which is a customer of Ripple and is a global brand, and I think there should be many more following them. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.